used to have fishing and hunting. What's going on? It is a breezy Tuesday, October 15th. And it's breezy. It blew hard yesterday up here in the northeast. 30, 40 mile an hour gusts. 20 plus mile an hour sustained wind. So I didn't I didn't dare come out yesterday. I just dropped bait and I uh, dropped bait again today. Uh, very busy throughout the night in my uh, my little area here and uh, they're getting nocturnal not to mention it blew I mean howled all day so you knew they were they were going to hold tight they weren't coming out but we are uh, we're set up I got a little something I added to the uh, the arsenal the video arsenal Let's hope, let's hope it uh, pays off. I have a zoom lens too, for in case uh, they're across the field, but I didn't bring it. I'm just trying to, you know, baby steps, baby steps. So, all right guys, um, we've already got our eight pointer for the fall bow uh, season here in New Jersey. Um, I've topped that off, I've got uh, five dough with that buck, so. Shot a doe first, had to earn a, earn a buck, shot a doe, shot my buck, and then uh, having a good season. Already at 60 or down. Um, permit bow opens up the 25th of October, and then, you know, that, that's, that's, then the rut comes on, right? So I'm going to be very selective um, the end of October going into November. Right now, let's see if we can... Uh, we could put another one in the freezer, back at the truck, and bring it to the butcher. Like, subscribe, say your prayers to the man upstairs. And uh, when you're saying those prayers, include the, uh, the folks in Florida and Carolinas. Go hunting. Alrighty, Beast Dad, Fishing and Hunting Nation. Thank you for joining in. Welcome back. That there. So you see, I'm playing with the focus. So I got a new Canon um, Rebel EOS T7 2000D. So I'm trying to, you know, still getting to learn this thing. Uh, but that there, that feeder block, bait block, is a Graniac XL. I'm telling you, when you run out of bait and they eat everything else, that still keeps them coming in. deer across the field. They might all be yearlings.
Man, did you see that bigger button buck giving that other little yearling the business? Greedy thing. There's enough food to go around. Believe me, I know. I put it out there. So these four yearlings... Man, they're, they're almost a constant. Come and go, come and go. They spent some time out here. And uh, the biggest one was a button buck. I'm just, they're yearlings, they're small. I'm not shooting any of them. But they were fun to, uh, fun to watch. So I watched a video a year or two ago about this old guy and he only goes in the woods with a can of corn, like a coffee can of corn for each hunt and he just sprinkles the corn all around. So mind you, I'm always baiting out here, but when I broadcast or when I drop kerneled corn and the kernel corn I'm using here is apple flavor, flavored kernels, I don't just drop it in piles, I spread it out almost like you're spreading chicken feed. And now that the grass is growing back in after the, uh, the area has been mowed, I try to spread a lot of it and throw a lot of it in the taller grass. This way they don't eat it as fast and it keeps them busy and it's somewhat more natural. Walking up to a big yellow pile of corn in the middle of the woods or in a field really isn't that natural when you think about it. They are browsers. Let them browse. Keep them busy. Enter the forest chickens, because I need another 30 eyes watching what I do. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I really do love watching 
different animals in nature interact with each other. It is pretty cool. How about you guys? Comment down below. Would you rather see just deer or do you enjoy the actual interaction and addition of all the, you know, the different animals that are out there? Let me know. That's that button book when it came back up, but I doubt it. You know, at first I thought this was one of those four yearlings actually coming back at me. I thought it was the bigger button buck. But the more and more I watched it, when I put glass on it and the closer it got, I realized, oh no, this is a big, big doe. You know, there's so many things to think about when you're uh, when you're hunting, and obviously target yada yada. So I'm waiting for this doe to take one more step forward with that right leg. However, you really don't want to shoot them when their heads are down because it's much easier for them to drop down, jump the shot, duck the string, and that's how they load up their rear legs to bolt off.
They really are amazing animals. I'm waiting for her to take one more step with that right leg to open up that crease, give me that perfect heart shot. But I shot when her head was down. Watch how fast she reacts to the shot. That's a throw and throw. She's going down right there. She went down right there. She didn't go 50, 60 yards. She's kicking. She's done. She is done. 31 yards. Mother guys across the across the way there they're just kinda of like looking like, hey, what's going on here? Dude, I just zipped her. Good size doe, 31 yards, dead in the middle of the field. Oh man, that's such a digestion. Oh, God. 31 yards. Man, through and through. Heart probably double long, and she's down. I got four deer still across the field, those four little ones. They're looking at me like, hey, what in God's green earth is going on? I'll tell you what's going on. I got a tag of deer. Oh, that's awesome. Let me call my buddy Rick. Monty Bugs. This one's going to you, buddy. All right, guys. Let's go see where, where I zipped her. All right. I'm trying to follow my... <laughs> you see those guys across the way there? They're still looking at us. <laughs> still looking at us. But number seven is in the dirt. In the dirt. Let's see, he was 30 yards out. Let's see if we can find where we hit her. 30 yards out. So if you look back, that's my blind right there. But we're just about facing exactly where we need to be. Let's try and find it. Try and find this one. She's in the dirt. Oh, I see something. I see a little something. I see a little lighted knock. Oh boy, let's go. So where did I hit her? I mean, she dropped. She didn't run 50, 50 yards at best. 50, 60 yards maybe. So she got shot right around here. I'm not seeing any blood yet, but I am seeing my knock. Let's take a take a look at the bolt here. Oh man, covered. Yep. Keep in mind these things get wiped off a lot because it's. Yeah, covered in blood. It's covered. Alright, let's 
whoops, bring this with us, see if we find any, uh, any blood, there's blood all over, blood in here, yep, 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 yeah, I mean she's right there, so obviously we got blood, but yeah, oh god, she was splattering, I just missed her, that's all, I just missed the blood trail, Big girl. Big girl. It's number seven in the book. Number seven in the books. Good sized doe. Whoo! Through and through. She was facing to the right, took one step, and we hit her right in the boiler maker. That red dot I put up earlier, that was exactly my point of aim. She ducked. She jumped that string, right? She had her head down. Makes it a lot easier. I just watched Michael Waddell this morning, and it's a, he talked about okay. doing what I do. I start Let's my do. aim point from the bottom up, and I work up on the body, and it worked out. All righty, Beast Staff Fishing Nation. That's number seven. I, at first, I thought that was the, uh, the button buck walking back in on me. I'm like, nah, this thing is big, and it's gray. Um, you know, I got a lot of lots, a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, I gotta, you know, work, first and foremost, shoot the deer. You know, make sure I get to put a good shot, good clean shot on him. But the, uh, you know, I got a new camera, so I bought this new Canon. I'm trying to take uh, take better quality videos in the field. Next time, I'm putting my zoom lens on. And. Uh, Man, that happened uh, kind of quickly. So, that's number seven. I'm gonna take that to the butcher, and that'll be uh, that'll be for my buddy Monty Bugs and his family and his dogs. His dogs eat a lot of good, clean deer meat, as does his family. So, I gotta go back get my truck, and uh, I gotta start cleaning, cleaning this deer. So. A lot of work to do and then haul it off to the butcher so like subscribe say your prayers to the man upstairs number seven is in the books go hunting